program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. We now stand in undeserved privilege, just like people born in a royal family stand in undeserved privilege. You are privileged. You are privileged, privileged to be the righteousness of God, privileged to be redeemed, privileged to have healing, privileged to have the wisdom of God, privileged. In a world where women's potential knows no bounds, we invite you to join us for a transformative event dedicated to celebrating and empowering women. Welcome to the 2024 Radical Women's Conference, a gathering of powerful minds, passionate hearts, and unstoppable spirits. With guests like Laura Pickett and Dr. Anita Phillips, tickets are on sale now. Text RADICAL to 51555, call 1-866-477-7683, or visit taffydollar.org to get yours today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that means to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, I, I, I say that this is the most important sermon I've ever preached before in my life because it's all of the pieces that have finally come together. And the Lord said to me, as I saw what Paul said, that he was privileged to preach the mystery of God. And he said, so likewise, son, be privileged to preach the mystery of God. And I'm about to unfold to you the mystery of God. That in some cases, many have lived and died and have never been able to see it. And that this morning, we are privileged to be able to see the plan and the mystery that came by God for his enjoyment. Glory to God. Let's begin. Ephesians 4 and 1, and I'm going to talk, I call this the worthy walk. Ephesians 4 and 1, he says, I, and Paul is speaking, I therefore, Underline the word, therefore. I never thought this word would have so much significance. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, I, I beseech you, I exhort you, I encourage you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Now, for many years, I assumed that I knew the calling that I have been called, and I limited it to, well, I was called to pastor, or you might lim limit it to, well, I was called to, to sing or to show compassion. But I can no longer do that, verse 1, I can no longer do that because Paul said, I therefore... So, in this appeal, he says, walk worthy of what you've been called. So, this appeal, and when I use the word appeal this morning, is an attempt, the word appeal means to persuade you to do something. And so, here in verse 1, he's trying to persuade us to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. He's trying to persuade us to do that. So, he's making an appeal for us to do that. And then later on, you'll see an appeal, put away bitterness. Later on, you'll see an appeal, uh, uh, lie not one to another. Later on, you'll see the appeal. So, the appeal is for an earthly life in full harmony with the exalted position to which the believer has been called. 
There's something about understanding what you've been called to that in a sense make justifies the appeal. In other words, I'm appealing to you to do something, but it doesn't work well until you, until you know the call, until you know the, the background behind it. And so this word, therefore, became real big. The word, therefore, points back to certain things presented in the preceding chapters, which are the basis for the appeal. So he'll say something in the preceding chapter. Chapter 1 says this, chapter 2 says this, chapter 3 says this, and now as a result of what has been said, therefore. So you see, I can't preach this until I satisfy this, therefore. Therefore, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you have been called. What, 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 what is it that will say, therefore, do this? What did he say in chapter 1? What did he say in chapter 2? What did he say in chapter 3? I got to back up in order to give reference to therefore. Yeah, y'all, yeah, we, we, I'm going to shout on therefore. So in these chapters that we're got, about to go back to look at, those chapters, you will find the greatest revelation of our present position. Get a bus. I'm about to show you the greatest revelation of the position that you, that we are all in, whether you know it or not right now. You will before you leave, but whether you know it or not, I'm getting ready to show you the greatest revelation of where you are right now. Mm. And I'm going to show you the eternal destiny of all of us who believe. So we're going to satisfy where you are today Rat, R-A-T, right now. And we're going to also satisfy the eternal destiny. No, you're not going to walk out here no more talking about, I wonder if I'm going to heaven or hell. It's going to satisfy that destiny. And once you find out your position and your destiny, the devil will not be able to touch you no more with all this tomfoolery that he's been hitting you with. The appeal to walk worthy of the call is not to live so as to gain the high calling. So he's not asking you to walk worthy of the thing that you've been called so you by walking worthy, will gain the call. <laughs> now watch this now. This position that the believer has been called to is so high that it, can, it cannot possibly be earned, not even if you live a perfect life, if that was possible. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. This position cannot be earned, not even if you lived a perfect life. It's not possible for us to live a perfect life, but if it were possible for you to live a perfect life, you still would not be able to earn this position. Ah. Now, that messes up your religion, doesn't it? Because we've been trained in religion, do a lot of stuff so you can earn a lot of stuff. But this is something you cannot earn. This position cannot be earned even if it were possible for you to live a flawless, perfect life. Hmm. The position belongs to the believer and it is his because God's calling and his own purpose, it is his because it is a gift of his grace. The position I'm about to show you 
it's, it's a gift of His grace given to you before you were born. This calling cannot be altered. It is unalterable. And then this appeal will never lose its force because this calling is unalterable. It is irrevocable. Uh, uh, look at this scripture, Romans chapter 11, verse 29 in the New King James Version. Romans 11, verse 29. Here's what God says, and he was referring to this. You're going to see a lot of scriptures that we just kind of use through cherry picking. You're going to see it all come together now. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. The New Living Translation says it can never be withdrawn. It can't be repented of. It won't change. It can't be taken away. Got a bull shot. Yeah. The call can't be lost. The call can't be changed. You can't do nothing to lose it. You can't do nothing to mess it up. It can't be, it, 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 it is what it is. Now, let me give you an example before I nail it down so you can gain concept of what I'm saying. Children born into a royal family are taught to conduct themselves as become royalty. Why? Because they are that by birth. Y'all, y'all, y'all getting with me. They, they, I don't care how perfect you are, you will never be in the royal family by all of your perfection. You are born into it. You didn't ask for it. You didn't work for it. You had to be born into it. So they honored the king and their country only as they so conducted themselves. They are forbidden many things which other children do. They weren't trying to have good conduct so they could be a part of the royal family. They were already a part of the royal family, and they said, I might as well get my conduct to a place where it matches my birthright. I'm not, I'm not having the right kind of conduct so I can earn royalty. I was born royal, so I might as well learn how to conduct myself as a royal. And we are a royal nation a holy people. Ah. So the royal position is the basis for the appeal for royal conduct. It's because I'm already royal, it's the basis to appeal, learn now how to walk like what you already are. So when Paul wrote, I therefore, he pointed to the believer's high and exalted calling as the reason for a life that would be in harmony with his calling. So this calling is, is the sufficient reason for the appeal. So when he says, lie not one to another, don't be bitter one to another, uh, don't steal no more one to another, he's not saying do all of that so you can be holy. He is saying holy has already been established. You were already born that way. It's already been established for you, so match it with your living. So now the question is, 
what is this calling that he is he is beseeching us to walk worthy or to conduct ourselves and to carry out this appeal because of this calling I got to know what this calling is I know let me pause everybody on the bus so far Go to Ephesians chapter 1 and 3. Now, this calling is a long list that makes up the believer's calling, and it's introduced here in Ephesians 1 verse 3. Now, follow very carefully now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who hath blessed and empowered us with, this is powerful, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So now here's what we know so far. This at once identifies the calling as, first of all, being what? Spiritual? and related to heavenly things. The calling is spiritual, and it's related to heavenly things. So the walk to be worthy must then be of spiritual order, and that walk must be on a heavenly plane. So this would be more than having a good moral life, much more. Now look at verse 4 and 5. Just as he chose us in him. So, when did he choose us? Before the foundations of the world. He chose you. This is way before, we're not even talking about before you were born. Think about it. God knew you before he made that world, he chose you before the foundation of the world, and what did he choose us to do? That we should be holy. Stop right there. God chose you to be holy. Before the world started, he chose you to be holy. Now, he didn't see if you are going to be holy. He chose you to be holy. You were going to be born that way. And he chose you, this blew my mind, and he chose you to be without blame. So in order for you to be without blame, you can't be responsible for nothing. He has to accept all responsibility for you. So if there's any blame to go around, God says, the buck stops with me. Without blame before him in love, in verse 5, having predestined. Oh, this is a bush. He predestined us to be adoption, to, to an adoption of sons by Jesus Christ himself. In other words, he made his mind up that every believer was going to be his son. He made his mind up that I am grafting you into the family and every privilege Jesus has as a son, you are now adopted into this same privilege. Y'all don't, don't understand what I'm saying. Ah. Uh, I need I need to show you something. Romans 5, 2 in the New Living Translation. We'll come back to verse 5 here. I, I'm I rightly divided this truth because the devil, I thought he was going to start playing with us today, like, they ain't going to hear this message, I'm going to turn the lights off. I will. <laughs> you, I, I can preach it in the dark. <laughs> now watch this, because everything I'm telling you is going to require your faith. That's it. Will you receive what he has done before the foundation of the world? 
with your faith. He said, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. You are a born-again Christian, and you stand in this place of undeserved privilege. That's royalty. You're privileged with stuff you don't deserve. The only reason you, 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 you you're privileged. You, you were, you're privileged because you, you were born into it. People in the royal family are privileged because they were born into it, and they weren't deserved. They are standing in the natural in an undeserved privilege, and we who are born again are sons of God, not deserved, but adopted, and so we now stand in undeserved privilege, just like people born in a royal family stand in undeserved privilege. You are privileged. You are privileged, privileged to be the righteousness of God, privileged to be redeemed, privileged to have healing, privileged to have the wisdom of God, privileged. So start walking in what you're privileged in and quit trying to figure out how you can deserve it because I'm telling you, you don't deserve none of it. You're privileged. So when you need to be healed, you declare, I'm healed. I'm a son of God. I ain't privileged to have it. Don't try to tell me what I did or what I didn't do. Don't try to talk about how I acted or how I should have acted. I am privileged, hallelujah. I am holy. I am without blame. <laughs> Having predestined us to the adoption as sons, by Jesus Christ to himself, according, all right, so he predestined for us to be his sons according to his good pleasure of his will. Somebody say, why did he do it? Because he wanted to. <laughs> it gives him pleasure to adopt all who believe as his sons and give you a privilege that you don't deserve. And now you're privileged to cry, Abba, Father. Yes, this is nothing less than eternal enjoyment of God's limitless love. This position in his presence is that of a son. This position in his presence is that of a son. God has made himself determined according to the good pleasure of his will that in the eternal state all believers shall be his sons. So this is a family relationship. Walk worthy of the family relationship. This is a family relationship. It's a position that's higher than any other celestial being. There are no angel, angels in the angelic class that have this position. None of the celestial beings, none of the seraphims, none, none, nothing, nothing in heaven carries this position. And we forget about it on a daily basis as we proceed to conduct ourselves as if we're not royalty. You keep acting like you're not born into this. How can Christians walk worthy of Christ? In Creflo Dollar's four-part series, The Worthy Walk, he reveals how to keep Satan at bay and be seen as faultless. What he wants you to do is recognize his work of grace and want to harmonize your life in line with what he has done. You walk where God is because you are in Christ and he is in you. You are continuously forever cleansed because you're in Jesus Christ and you are in the light and in the light you can never be in darkness again. 
This revelation-filled series is available for a love gift of $25 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or $35 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Accept Jesus' finished works today. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Change is here and it's waiting for you. 2024's Change Experience Tour kicks off with a first stop in Los Angeles and you need to be here. Join Creflo Dollar on Friday, February 2nd, 2024 for an unmatched experience of praise, worship, revelation, and getting Psalm 91 equipped. It was amazing, Psalms 91. To hear all these believers, people from all over come. It was powerful just feeling the power of the Holy Spirit in the room and it just felt like we were just one. But when you have the opportunity to be anointed in person by someone who's so anointed by God, that's the choice that you should be making for the change in your life. Just to be there in person and to see the pastor teaching, I wouldn't miss that for, for the while. If you had the chance to change, would you take it? Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Scan the QR code on your screen or visit www.creflodollarministries.org to reserve your spot today. The Bible teaches us to give generously with a cheerful heart, not out of necessity, but out of a cheerful heart. And that's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision. You know that when people understand grace, they're empowered to change their lives for the better. Thank you for supporting us with your financial donations. And every time you give, you're being used by God to stop misfortune in someone else's life. And for that, we say thank you. God bless you. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to creflodollarministries.org. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level, develop your walk with the Lord, and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. So if you're gonna monitor unbelief in your life, you're gonna have to monitor the contradictions in your mind and your thoughts according to the Word. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. You can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. When you understand that you've been forgiven, I'm telling you, you'll allow other people to experience that same forgiveness. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.